Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, let's just begin this time with a word of prayer. Uh, so, could one of us please lead us? What, sir? Can you please lead us in prayer? Okay, Pastor. Father God, we come before your presence in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you, Lord, as we begin our session. I pray that Holy Spirit, you will lead us and guide us. You use our pastor as he teaches the word of God and the session and help us to be receptive to your word that we will learn new thing this morning also in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Watsa. Right. Uh, firstly, I want to apologize uh, for posting the link a little bit late because uh, as I posted it, you know, my laptop started hanging and then to reboot the whole system and uh, apologize for that. Uh, all right. So last week, let's do a quick review uh, of what we did last week. Last week, we looked at chapter 14, if I'm not wrong. Yes, chapter 14. And we looked at ways that we can evangelize both in urban settings and in rural setting, settings, right? So we looked at uh, different strategies that we can use for children, for youth, young adults, uh, married individuals, families, uh, young couples. So there are different uh, methods. But one important point that we focused on was using wholesome methods, which means spirit-led, legal, ethical methods. And I give you a lot of examples where uh, you know we are not to offend people, even as we minister to people, we, we use wholesome methods, right? We let people know that, hey, this is a Christian event. This is a Christian program. Uh, don't do anything uh, trying to lure people into, you know, coming to the concert or coming to a meeting or a conference, whatever we are doing. Let's be spirit-led. Let's be legal. Let's be ethical as well. Do not offend people. Be culturally sensitive. Be culturally relevant as well so for example if you're doing many you know uh, probably plan to do an event in in an urban setting right uh, you can think of doing a, a you know a worship concert or a music concert uh, followed by just preaching of the word uh, but if it's a rural setting you know it's more of a town uh, look at different methods right look at different ways that you can reach out uh, to them but as you do all of this, be sensitive, be relevant, right? So there's no point. So for example, you're going to a rural setting, you know, not many people are interested in, you know, electric guitars and all these um, high end equipment. If we go there and we start, you know, uh, plan to have a worship, like, you know, like a concert, it may not be relevant to the people there. And so it, it may end up that, you know, the, the whole event may, it may have been very wonderful, the planning and all of it, but it since it's not relevant to the culture, uh, it won't you know really touch people's lives, right? It it won't minister to people. So, whichever setting that you are in, right, whether it's an urban or a rural setting, uh, uh, as you be sensitive, be relevant to the people, right? What kind of you know culture? What kind of uh, language or what kind of styles that they have, try to be relevant to them, right? Uh, and as you do that, don't min don't be uh, uh, don't intentionally offend people, right? Do not you know blame people. Uh, you know, God has commissioned us to preach, and so we are not to violate people's you know time, money, energy, and all of that. So we need to maintain ourselves in that aspect as well. Laptops hanging again, uh, right? Okay, so we'll get into chapter fifteen now. From chapter fifteen onwards, uh, it's uh, if you see in your notes, they're just pointers, and so most of the from chapter fifteen to chapter nineteen are just pointers, and so we will quickly complete. Uh, you know, we just look at those pointers, gain some understanding from them, practical tips as well, and so. I hope to just cover all of this in this class. And this class, this uh, will be the last session for uh, your semester. And then uh, 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 we will also put the assignments up 
uh, probably put it today or tomorrow so you have enough time uh, to complete your final assessment as well but uh, today uh, will be your last session uh, for this course as well so um all right, let's get into these few practical tips. Chapter 15, practical information on a few strategies. So if you see your notes, you've got three points there. Street or mall evangelism, workplace groups, and coffee shops. Now, uh, once again, um, uh, let's just look, let's pick up each of them. Uh, first one, street or mall evangelism. Now, wherever we are, it gives us an opportunity to minister you know, to evangelize in the street or uh, in malls. Now, as we do that, now we need to plan carefully. Have people in your team to plan with you, right? Of course, you may be the leader. Eventually, it is your decision. You may be the pastor of a church or pastor of the life group, pastoring a life group or whatever role that you are in, in the church. Have people around you to give you ideas, give you strategies, right? So for example, street ministry, uh, what are the places that are safe? How are you going to reach out? Now, street ministry is not something that is very, you know, it's not a church setting, right? You need to be very prayerful. You need to plan well. You need to organize yourself in teams, um, right? And you need to, you know, you'll find all kinds of people. You should be both mentally prepared you need to be physically prepared now when i say physically prepared is uh you know uh, i remember this one time this young man in our church uh young guy maybe about 19 years old he said i want to come with you uh pastor for uh, street evangelism i said okay let's go uh, so 11 o'clock i told him meet me in this place we met and so we, I just gave him a few track, gave him a few pointers, how you can start off. And uh, so we began just, you know, we had a worship evening on Saturday. So it was probably a Thursday or a Friday. We usually go out. And so we were giving out these invites. And then he comes to me after 10 minutes of, I think it was 15 minutes. And he says, uh, Pastor, I think I'm really tired. Uh, and I said, what happened? He said, no, I'm feeling very tired. My legs are paining. So I was really surprised because he's just probably about 20 years old and his legs were painting, standing for 15 minutes. Right? Uh, he was genuinely, he was not lying to me, but uh, he was genuinely, uh, you know, telling me that his legs were painting. And, um, and so, you know, uh, I said, okay, don't worry, you can just go back home. There's no compulsion. And, uh, but I realized that even as we do ministry, we are to look after ourselves, right? Uh, uh, physically, we need to be fit. Mentally, we need to be strong, right? So malls and street evangelism, practically, look at your setting. Look at where you are. Are you in a city? Are you in a, a, a town? How are you going to uh, evangelize? I did mention that on Christmas, events like Christmas and uh, you know, uh, uh, other times, especially, you know, we had the Indian festivals like uh, Diwali. So you have a lot of people coming to these malls and all. So it gives you an opportunity to uh, probably, you know, think about doing street evangelism as well. So uh, my whole, you know, my whole this thing, you know, uh, I, I tell people that street evangelism, it's not, it's not something that all of us, uh, you know, may, you know, be very very well equipped with we all are learning uh, but we need to be wise in the way we do evangelism right so uh, if, if god is leading you to do it go ahead uh, and even as you do it be prayerful pray about it pray three four days think about how you're going to do it plan with your team and then uh, look at locations which is more appropriate uh, and then uh, take it forward then you got workplace groups. Now, many of us may be working, uh, working in call centers, IT companies, businesses, right? Now, this is a wonderful opportunity to bring the gospel uh, to the people uh, in your sphere of influence. Now, now for example, uh, you know, many years back before I joined the Bible College, uh, we, I used to work in a couple of companies, IT companies, and uh, uh, what we would do is six o'clock was a login time, uh, and our cabs used to reach by five thirty a.m. And so uh, I just felt in my heart we can do a prayer, you know, five thirty to six o'clock, just a song, 
uh, just pick up a verse quickly, just 10 minutes, talk about that verse. And so, so I remember telling my friends and, and nobody really came initially. Uh, we were about two people, three people. We would sit in the lawn outside in the, you know, these huge IT parks there. So we'd sit outside, we'd sing a song, read a verse, uh, sometimes share a testimony. So just two, three of us. Uh, but what happened was people began to speak about that, right? So uh, uh, many people began to start attending 5.30, right? 5.30 in the morning. So from 2, we went up to 10, 20. Uh, it just, you know, many people began to come. Finally, we were about 30, 40 people. Uh, and so it was a wonderful time. Uh, many lives were touched. Many people, uh, you know, uh, experienced the presence of God. And many people, many uh, of our colleagues were also touched and uh, quite a few of them accepted the Lord as well. So uh, it, it's a wonderful opportunity, workplace groups. Now, even as you do this, right, uh, be sure to follow all guidelines, right? So for example, if your company says five o'clock, six o'clock is login or six o'clock, you need to be in the office, be there at six o'clock. Don't say, uh, you know, Wrong thing to do would say, you know, we were having extended time of worship, so we, you know, or we were praying, so we couldn't stop. No, no. Uh, uh, work is work, right? So uh, uh, follow guidelines, right? Uh, anything that is apart from work time, uh, you can, you know, use it for workplace groups and, you know, start prayer groups, Bible study groups. Um, and another important thing that, uh, we need to remember is, uh, you know, I, I noticed that, you know, a few of my friends, they had started these groups and they booked the conference hall, right? So every week they would book the conference hall and uh, uh, somehow, you know, that kind of backfired because, you know, uh, all the other people were like, oh, how can you give it to them? They have to pay for it and all of it. So if you plan to start workplace groups, you can also plan to do it after work timings uh, with only your colleagues, or you can plan it in your break time before the work, uh, so, you know, before work time starts. So plan accordingly that it does not affect your work, nor does it affect your uh, company in any way, right? So uh, be right in that way. Then you got coffee shops where you can, you know, uh, go to coffee shops, have coffee uh, together in, uh, you know, malls. We used to do that many, many years back where uh, I think last week we discussed about this where youth uh, would, you know, we would take up, maybe it was, I think it was six or seven tables. Uh, we'd book it, pre-book those tables. And so our youth would come, we'd pre-book, I think it was one coffee each uh, and a snack. And so we pre-book it, sit there and uh, we would have, fellowship time. It was a wonderful opportunity to invite uh, people from other faiths. Now, this may not work in rural settings, right? Uh, this is mostly in urban settings in cities and, uh, uh, you know, uh, metropolitan cities and all these kind of places. So, so you look at what can work in your, uh, in your setting. Then we also look at permeating our sphere. The word sphere means our influence, right? Now, now, if, if we are in ministry, right, if you are a pastor or an evangelist, your sphere is only ministry, right? But you will have people within your community, maybe some of them are, you know, in business, some of them are in the government sector, some of them are in accounting and, uh, you know, uh, 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 in teaching and so many other professions, right? Now, we are called to impact our sphere of influence, right? Uh, uh, so for example, if you're a teacher, right, uh, you can impact your students' lives by being a testimony, right? If, if you're a businessman, right, uh, you can impact, bring godly principles into your business. If you're working for a business, you know, uh, use godly principles in your business uh, and, uh, if, if there's other uh, spheres of influence, maybe uh, arts and entertainment, government, uh, all these spheres, God is calling us to reach out to these places, whichever sphere of influence. Now, 
the reason I'm talking about this is because many times I've noticed that, you know, students, or oh, sorry, uh, people will be working in the, uh, you know, maybe in the IT company, in the corporate sector, but, you know, only on Sundays, they would be, you know, uh, okay, let's do this in the church and let's do that. Now, we understand that, you know, it's work life is, is, is hectic, You've got Monday to Friday, some places Monday to Saturday as well. Uh, we understand that it's hectic, it could be strenuous, uh, yet God is calling us to impact those societies. If we are willing to impact societies if, in, in our sphere of influence, God will open the doors. Right. All we need to do is be willing. And uh, let me give you this example. Uh, uh, we were in uh, in the city of Mangalore. Uh, we have a lot of colleges around, and so we have this very very prestigious college. It's it's, it's a college where people come from all across uh, our nation to study there. Uh, people come for uh, you know their uh, masters, and they come to do their degree and. Uh, medical students, nursing students. It's a huge college, huge campus. Um, and a few of our students had come to our church and uh, we began to speak to them, ask them, you know, they were saying, you know, this is how the college is, this is how. And so we, we did go and see the college. And I thought to myself, how can we get an opportunity to go and in, get into this college and minister to the students? Right now, on the on the flip side, we've already been ministering to nursing students, you know, um, and uh, many colleges. We would go and do this one hour session. But my heart was, how can we permeate this college? Right. So we can't just stand outside, keep giving out tracks and all of it. Yeah, we can do that, but that's only going to reach a few people. But how can we sow seeds into these young students' life? We've got thousands of students. And so we, as a church, we kept it in prayer. We used to think about it. Uh, and it looked like something that is impossible because it's a very, you know, it's a very prestigious college. And, you know, we are not some, you know, great teachers or some great philosophers that people would invite us. Uh, but we always thought, okay, God, open a door for us. And sure enough, uh, before the lockdown, uh, God was faithful. He, uh, through, uh, through a uh, other college universities, he, we got an open door. We went into these colleges. We were able to talk about life skills, talk about um, you know bringing the gospel, talk about suicide, depression, and how uh, how God helps helps us overcome these things. And so, though it was generic, we were able to bring in the word of God, right? Uh, and so, no matter what we see, no matter what uh, sphere of influence we are in, we may see a wall, right? Uh, like the walls of Jericho that is stopping us from entering what God has for us. Now you look at that wall and you, you, you can speak to that wall. And you say, God, make a way through this. If, you know, we've been teaching in um, uh, you know, the other subject uh, uh, on revivals. And uh, one of the things that is very important is God hears hearts who are hungry. If people are hungry for God, God will open a door. Right? Uh, how he opens it, that is his way. But we need to be hungry for God. Now, if we are not hungry for God, God will not open doors. Right. Of course, in his grace and his favor, he will. Uh, but if we want bigger opportunities, there needs to be a greater hunger for God. Right? Uh, let me share this. There's this young pastor in our city. Um, he's got an English church. He started the church in about 2015, uh, 2016, I guess. I could be wrong. 2016. Uh, a young man, very, very, very powerful man of God. Uh, very, you know, energetic. Uh, he loves the Lord. Uh, you know, he and his wife have come here. They have a small child as well. Uh, they started the church. They have about 15 odd people in the church. And, you know, we were talking. Uh, he's a very good friend of mine. And, 
and we were talking and uh, he was saying, you know, Mangalore is such a hard city and all of that. Uh, and then he asked me, when did you, you know, we, as we were talking, we, he asked me, when did you come here? I said, 2018. Uh, uh, so, and then as we were talking, uh, you know, he's of course come to our church, he's visited us as well. And, and so he's seen about 70, 80 people in our church. And so he asked me, how did you manage to get so many people into church, you know, get connected to church in just probably one and a half to two years? Right? Uh, so I told him, he knew it was only about 10 people in about two years, it became 70 to 80 people. Uh, so he asked me, how did you manage to do that? I said, see, it's not about me. God adds people into the church. We know that that is God's purpose. That is God's plan. God wants to build his church. God wants to add people to his church. But there is a practical aspect of, uh, of each one of us working for it. Right? So I gave him the example of, you know, uh, Adam. You know, God told Adam, you, you're here in the garden. You till it. You you." work on it and I will make it fruitful. So I asked him, what do you do during the week? What, what kind of ministry do you do? So he said, I just visit a few families. I pray, I read the word. Uh, I spend most of my time praying, reading the word. I said, that's wonderful. Right? But if we want to see people, if we want to see uh, you know, people being added into the church, people getting connected, we have the practical, yes, the spiritual aspect is you know, studying the word of God, praying, fasting. That's wonderful. That is important. That's number one priority. But with that, we have to do the practical. So I remember telling him, you know, uh, uh, see, you're doing what is important. That's wonderful. Right? Now, I want to encourage you to go out on the streets, go out to people and reach out to them. Nobody is going to go, nobody is going to, you know, find where your church is and come. Even if they do, there are going to be two or three of them, right? Uh, like, for example, last week, two weeks back, we had a few students. They went to, on, they went online. They searched for churches in Mangalore. They found the church. They just came. That's going to be a very few number. But uh, when we go out, put the word out, okay, there's a church. This is what we are. This is our time. This is what you, you can come and be part of it. That's when the word is going to go out and people will know. Right. Uh, and so I told him, uh, instead, you can you can plan out. Right. So, uh, for example, what I do is Mondays and Tuesdays, I stay at home, just pray, read the word, don't go out anywhere. Wednesday, I go out. I, you know, just call for students. If I see families, just, just go reach out. And then on Friday is our fasting prayer. So we fast and pray the whole day. And Saturday, again, I go out on outreach. So, you know, we balance. We have to balance what we do. So I remember telling this pastor, you, know, you do that. You go out. Now, you, you know, he also has worship evenings and all of it. Um, and he was telling me, you know, only 10, 12 people come sometimes. So I stopped that. I said, don't stop it. Make invites. Go out on the street. Uh, you will see some students, right? And uh, there are wonderful ways that, you know, uh, we can connect with people. You never know this one person you call. Uh, you know, I think I've shared this one. one. Once I was you know, with my son and we were in this uh, restaurant. I saw this Northeast boy. Um, and I went up to him and I said, hey, uh, you know, uh, are you a Christian? He said, yes. Uh, said, see, uh, this, I gave him a track. I said, this is our invite, our church invite. This is where we are. He said, oh, that's wonderful. I've just come here. It's been a month. Uh, sure enough, he came on Sunday with a friend. And this was two years back, right, before, much before the lockdown. He came with his friend. And he brought his friend, he and his friend brought 10 other students. And those 10 students, most of them are now graduated, but they are still informing their, you know, their uh, juniors, hey, you can go to this church, there's a church there. And and so I never knew of the ripple effect, right? I never knew that. I just looked at, okay, two of them, maybe they can be part of the church, but uh, they invited many students. And so through that gave us an opportunity to get into the whole, that university itself, they were able to speak to the management. That's how we were able to get into that prestigious university. 
So it's even as we do all of this, don't look at the walls. Don't look at what is the impossible. Look at what God can do. Right? So think of those walls of Jericho. It looks like an impossibility. Maybe it's your neighbor that you want to minister to. Uh, and it's and he or she is a hardcore atheist, right? Don't look at it as a wall. Look at it as an opportunity. Ask God to open doors. Uh, or maybe there's somebody else who's a, a hardcore person from another faith, right? Uh, and they know everything. Don't look at it as a wall. But prayerfully look at it as an opportunity to bring the gospel. So have focused prayers. Whatever your wall is uh, that you're looking at, just pray and the Lord will be able to, uh, you know, open doors, right? And, and also chapter 17 talks about the book of Acts. Now, in the book of Acts, there are plenty, plenty, plenty of, uh, you know, uh, evangelism techniques that we have seen, ideas that we can get. Uh, but the most important thing we see that was they spent time in prayer, teaching of the word, ministry of the word. Uh, uh, remember, uh, Peter, uh, Peter and John, uh, they, were, they were they were commanded not to you know not to preach the word. But what did they say? They said, "How can we listen to you uh, when we are called to listen to God?" So uh, they were willing to do whatever was whatever they wanted to do, like you know what God called them to do. Uh, two, there was boldness, very bold. Uh, there was no sense of fear. Uh, they knew that they, you know, the, that the Lord is with them. They were also empowered by the Holy Spirit. In everything that they did, they were empowered by the Holy Spirit. And and so uh, I'm sure uh, next semester you will have uh, a study on the book of Acts. So there's much more uh, that you can learn from that also. And I'm sure most of us have been studying the book of Acts as well. So... Right. Chapter 18 talks about serving the poor, serving the needy. Uh, now, all of us, uh, you know, love to serve the poor, maybe love to serve the poor, the needy, uh, love to be a blessing. Uh, some of them have been called to do it. Some of them may not have that calling, but we all have this ability to serve the poor and serve the needy. In some cases, people may quit their jobs, quit everything, look at it as a full-time ministry. Like, so for example, you've got people who started children's home, home for the destitutes, uh, home for the aged. Uh, it becomes like a full-time ministry. But maybe God is just not calling us to that full-time. Uh, but wherever we are, whatever we are doing, whether we are in the workplace, whether we are in ministry, God has called us to serve the poor and to serve the needy in whatever capacity that we can, right? Now, there will be times when, you know, we understand that, you know, as families, uh, we have we may have children, we may have monthly expenses, we may be going through financial difficulties, we may not be able to provide for them. Uh, but do not be discouraged. Do not feel, oh, I'm not fulfilling what God has called me to do. No, don't feel that. Uh, there will come a time right, where God will give you the ability to be a blessing to others. Right? Uh, in the meanwhile, what we can do is pray for them. Pray for the poor, pray for the needy, serve them. Right? One of the things that I used to do uh, many, many years back was I knew that I was you know, not financially able to support because I was in Bible college. Uh, I couldn't really support them financially, but what I would do is I would, uh, you know, go to these home for the aged or children's home. Few of us, we, me and my friends, we go to these children's home, home for the aged. Uh, just go there, uh, you know, take my guitar, sing a few songs, uh, encourage them, pray with them, probably spend some time with some games. Uh, uh, you know, there was not much that I could give financially, but it was more of a service. Uh, where they were very happy, you know, they felt happy, there was joy in their hearts, they were refreshed in their minds and their spirit, uh, because they'd just been, you know, locked up in that uh, place for many, many years, maybe going through sadness, depression, sometimes their 
family members have left them there. Uh, we don't really know what they're going through. So serving does not mean only financial help, but it can also be ministering to them through the word, through worship and being a blessing to them. Right. So look at opportunities. If you feel that you're able to do it, go ahead. Right? Especially times when, you know, you got, uh, uh, pro, you know, uh, Easter Sunday, you got Christmas. Uh, these are wonderful times where we can choose to be a blessing uh, to the poor, to the needy. You know, sometimes uh, it, with all this, you know, uh, enjoyment and you know, these programs and all these wonderful uh, events that we have, celebrations with families, all that is important. Sometimes we neglect, uh, you know, the poor, the needy. And, and so we can do our bit. We can do our bit, whether they are often children, whether they are uh, elderly people in destitute homes, home for the aged. Uh, look at what you can do. If you get an opportunity, if you feel that that's something that you can, you know, share your gifts, your talents with them, uh, to bless their lives, go ahead and do that, right? And you never know because as you do that, they may see Christ through you, and you know they will be that will be a blessing uh, for them as well. So, so uh, yes. So with this, we complete uh, our portions. Uh, usually, when we do the in-person classes, uh, we usually have role plays. Uh, uh, happening where we could, you know, uh, put forth different scenarios and, uh, you know, uh, do role plays so that we can learn. Uh, but, uh, with this setting, we really couldn't do that. Uh, but uh, anybody have any questions, any thoughts? Uh, I think, John, you raised your hand. Uh, sorry if I didn't, uh, I think I did notice it. Yeah, uh, that was to admit uh, Brother Subhashish. I think he probably got <laughs> okay. it. Okay, okay, okay. Thanks. Right. Any questions? Any thoughts? Uh, any of you uh, were able to, you know, minister to friends or people around? Uh, any experiences of late, recent ones? Okay. All right. No problem. Uh, so this comes to the end of our sessions. Yes, Divya, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, yes, Pastor. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, not in a way that uh, we could share the gospel, but uh, this was to one of our friends. We had been friends with them for a long time. So uh, recently um, they had, a, you know, kind of uh, uh, an important uh, thing in their life. So we were invited. Uh, so we were the first ones who were invited to their home. So um, uh, we wanted to make it special for them, so uh, we tried, you know, to um, uh, you know make that make that a little uh, special, uh, especially because there are no no one else like there are no other relatives or nobody else for them. So uh, and that time um, they were very grateful uh, because of uh, what we did and uh, because of our presence as well as uh, we tried to you know pray for them because it is uh, uh, such a um, uh, important time of their life so uh, earlier i do not know would they have allowed it uh, but uh, god helped us do it and uh, more the more we talk with them you know they are opening up much more to uh, to us and yeah we are praying about it uh so yeah i feel like god is opening our door uh praising god for that yeah Praise and uh, yeah and uh, another is uh like it it is a it is a stranger you know um um uh, had a conversation with a stranger uh so I never thought that I could, you know, uh, try to have a, um, like she began sharing her details. I never thought that she would share like her personal details. 
uh, but one thing I was I was trying to uh, bring things of God into the conversation, uh, like asking about the church and uh, came to know like she uh, was brought up in a Christian home. Uh, I mean, the mother was a Christian, but uh, there were so many tragedies along the way. So, yeah, it was a little hard to proceed the conversation. But yeah, still, uh, it was a good, you know, um, way that yeah, God helped me to yeah, just start. Yeah. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you, Divya, for sharing. Yeah. So, Divya, uh, just a suggestion. What you can do is uh, give it some time. So if it's your first or your second conversation, uh, uh, you don't have to really bring in the church or, uh, you know, uh, uh, too much of God into the conversation, right? It's because she may be going through a very difficult time. Maybe uh, it's been many years or maybe it's something that's just happened. So uh, she's opening up to you. Just probably listen to her, go through that whole, you know, it may be tiresome, but, uh, you know, just be there, listen to her, listen, you know, because they need somebody to, you know, let go of all their, uh, you know, inner hurt that is there in them. So, uh, just be there to listen to her. I know that's the tiresome part or that, that could be a part where you sometimes because we really want to just bring in Jesus immediately. Oh, Jesus will be able to do it. Uh, but it's also important to listen. right? Uh, and we did study about that. Right. Uh, so listen, give it some time. Uh, there'll come a time, you know, when she will ask you, oh, what do you think? What should I do? Then you, you know, prayerfully you can think about, uh, you know, how you're going to present uh, probably a Bible verse or a song. Uh, so, so give it some time. Even if you are not able, even if the conversation for maybe uh, three, three, four, uh, you know, the next two, three times you meet, even if you're not able to bring Christ in, it's all right. right? Uh, at the right time, you can, God will open a door and you will get an opportunity, right? Because sometimes when we forcefully say things uh, in, during their painful time, they may just take a step back. Uh, and so you don't want to lose that. So uh, it's all right to take it slow. Right? Yeah, yeah. But actually, it was to a, uh, that was a stranger. So I'm not sure that we would meet okay. her again. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, yeah. It was just like a very casual conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. yeah. Okay. That was a stranger. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. Thank you for sharing, Divya. Oh, yes. Uh, Zilatoli, you want to share something? Go ahead. Um, yeah, I would like to share. Um, it's been a while. Like it's been some years. Uh, our family and our church. Here we are praying for my youngest uh, brother, and uh, you know, like. Whenever we used to have prayer meetings, I used to invite him, you know, you can be a part of us, but, you know, he has nothing to do with church or, you know, prayer, everything, you know, he just got up with his own role. So, like, uh, recently we had a crusade in our, uh, uh, our church organized a crusade, and I just felt led to ask him to volunteer, you know, hey, why don't you come and help us, you know, like, you're good in arranging chairs, you know, and we need, you know, younger um, uh, uh, men and all those things to help us out. We are in need of volunteers. And like, so I, I just give him an invitation. I did not expect him to, you know, respond. And uh, he willingly responded. And, you know, uh, he started to attend, uh, you know, prayer meetings because before the crusade, we used to have prayer meetings well, even for the volunteers, so we were having prayer meetings, and after that, you know, I, you know during the crusade, you know, like a uh, pastor was given an altar call who want to give their life to Jesus, and he came forward, and he accepted the Lord, and I'm so happy for him, and uh, we praise God for his life, that he accepted Jesus, and it's been two weeks. He's just so regularly attending the church services. So I just want to give thanks and give glory to God for that. Praise God. That's wonderful, uh, Zilatoli. One thing that you can do since he's your brother is you can, you know, slowly uh, get him interested into the word, right? Uh, get him interested in into, you know, reading the word or you can send him some 
uh, you know, sermons which uh, had some good teachings, send him that on WhatsApp or some videos, links, email him, uh, uh, give him like, you know, one of the things that happened is, see, uh, we did this in discipleship. They're still babies in Christ, right? Uh, so the initial phase is very important where they, you know, uh, uh, should be able to look into the word, grow in the word, right? So, uh, so you slowly, you know, you can put that in. Maybe you, you can give them books if he likes to read. Uh, if it's videos, explain about this videos. Uh, you know, uh, this is what this person is talking about. Why don't you listen to it? Uh, and then send the video. Uh, so th that way, what you're doing is you're building him up, right? So now that salvation has happened, uh, now he needs to become that disciple, right? He needs to grow in the Lord, in his spirit. So uh, that's wonderful, uh, wonderful, Sir Tony, yes. Uh, anybody else would like to share? Oh. Okay, all right. So we will close uh, uh, this session and we have completed our course. So thank you all so much uh, for uh, journeying with me. It's been a wonderful time. There's lots of learning. Uh, and I just pray that each one of us, uh, me too included, uh, that will grow strong in the Lord, that we'll be able to be wonderful ministers of God. Even as you go through the next semester, you will have apologetics, how to defend the gospel. Then in the third year, you will have world religions. Uh, and so you'll be able to put everything into context, even as you continue with your studies. Right. Okay. Uh, so let's just close in prayer. Uh, uh, John, can you close in prayer, please? Bless all of them. Yep. Sure. Gracious Lord, we want to thank you for this time you've given us to help us to understand um, the way we should be ministering through evangelism to the people around us, God, and helping us to rem remember um, that how precious it is to serve your kingdom, Lord Jesus. And we pray, O oh God, that um, even as we have learned, um, help us to also apply this in our lives. Help us to reach out to people who are in need and share your goodness. And thank you for uh, teaching us different strategies, different methods that we could use. We uh, Thank you for Pastor Paul. Thank you for enabling him to share your word um, and also to help us uh, understand through his uh, practical life scenarios, Lord Jesus. We want to thank you for um, uh, all the lessons that we have learned in this class. We pray, O oh God, that um, we would be able to uh, apply this and see the results in your kingdom, Lord Jesus. Help all of us to serve. Help all of us to um, sow into your kingdom and, and to see the way you're working so wonderfully in our lives, O oh God. We thank you. We want to praise you, Jesus. In Jesus' most precious name, we pray. Amen. 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 Right. Uh, before we close, one other thing. Uh, I will put the portion, sorry, the uh, final assessment up on the classwork tab. Uh, so do remember to download them. You know, it's an open book exam. You can just f fill in your answers and then uh, please put it before the due date so that uh, everything goes smoothly. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Uh, for this wonderful, wonderful, uh, you know, this whole semester. God bless you all. I'll see you all in the next semester. God bless. Have a wonderful day, wonderful week ahead. God bless.